For two months now, I have been getting a ton of questions about the texture backdrop behind my TV, which causes my RGB lighting to bounce and reflect in ways unachievable with the basic flat wall surface. Well guys, that is going to be the sole focus for this video today. How I measure, prep, cut, and install the 3D panels onto my wall so that you can enjoy the very same futuristic space vibes that I enjoy each and every day. Hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. Here we go. All right guys, so I'm going to divide this tutorial up into four sections. Overview and specs, measuring, preparation, and finally cutting and installation. And while I know it may be tempting to skip ahead, I really want to encourage you guys to watch all points of the video to reduce the amount of follow-up questions that may have already been covered off on. Let's get into the overview and specs. These diamond shaped texture tiles are made by a company called R3D. They come in both the PVC plastic material or what R3D refers to as plant fiber, which has a heavy duty cardboard like consistency. Now the main advantage for going with plant fiber is that they are a few bucks cheaper and they're easier to cut to size than with PVC. But outside of this, in my opinion, the PVC material is better in every other way. The PVC panels are waterproof, they are flame resistant, which is a really good idea if you're going to be installing these panels behind a TV with lots of wires, and overall, they're just a lot more durable than with plant fiber. The PVC version also has a much more smooth and polished look right out the box without any painting necessary. Both versions come in packs of 12, they're each recommended for flat poreless surfaces, and they each measure 19.7 by 19.7 inches. So a single pack will cover roughly 32 square feet. I am using the matte white diamond shaped version, but I do want to point out that R3D makes a ton of different other designs, from wavy designs to square blocks, star designs, and so on. But it's been over two years now, and I still prefer the original diamond design to all of the different designs that were available then and now. R3D has even come out with a new diamond version that has jagged joints to better conceal the seams between each panel. I was actually really interested in picking up this new design at the onset, but after looking further into it, I learned that you'll have to physically cut each of the panels at the edges for a finished look. Whereas with the original design, the edges are already finished for you. In addition to the matte white color that I'm currently using, this diamond design also comes in matte black as well as silver. But for the best and most accurate reflection of your LED lights, I highly recommend that you go with the matte white color. Measuring is something that you really want to do early on in the beginning stages of your project before you make any purchases. Because nothing is worse than coming to the midpoint of a project only to discover that you don't have enough supplies to complete the job. And of course, you certainly don't want to overorder and end up with an excessive amount of panels. Especially considering that each pack of 12 is going to run you 70 bucks. To get started, measure both the length and the width of your project area in feet, and then simply multiply those numbers to come up with your square footage. My project area is roughly 8 feet in length and 5.4 feet in width or height, so my total square footage comes out to be just over 43 square feet. A single pack of 12 panels covers 32 square feet, so right off the bat, I knew I'd require two packs at minimum. So because I wanted to show you guys the full ins and outs of the process, rather than simply talking about panels that are already up on my wall, I took the liberty to remove a few of my panels that were originally installed less than perfectly, causing a few gaps here and there. Once you have the panels in hand, go ahead and lay out the first row so you can get a feel for how you want the pattern to be once they're up on your wall. You'll notice that each of the diamonds have flat sectional breaks in between. So if you really want, you can try to line these up as best as possible from panel to panel, though this is not necessary for a clean and finished look. Once you're feeling good about where things are on that front, it's time to prepare the wall surface for your project area. Again, your wall surface needs to be predominantly flat for these panels to work. 
If you happen to be working with an aged or cracking surface, R3D recommends that you use a water-based seal primer before attempting the install. Now, I have a wooden slat wall behind my panels as shown, which means that there are breaks between each slab where you see the aluminum. This isn't the most ideal for everything to lay perfectly flush, but luckily the wall is fully finished and poreless, so I haven't had any trouble with my panels falling down on me or anything in the two year time span that they've been up. The final step before we move on to the actual installation is cleaning. I like to pour 70% rubbing alcohol into a clean spray bottle and add a little bit of water into that bottle as well to dilute the alcohol because the goal is to free your wall of any dust and debris and not to strip down the paint. When it comes to installing the panels up onto your wall, there are a number of ways to get the job done, but I'm going to show you the method that I use, which does not involve using construction adhesive glue as R3D recommends, and it does not involve using caulking or sanding. But if you really wanna go this route, then by all means, go for it. But in my opinion, if you get the R3D panels that have the finished edges as the ones that I am using, and you take your time during installation, you really shouldn't have very many gaps or separations between the panels, which is what the caulking and the sanding attempts to address. Each and every one of these panels is being held up by these Scotch double-sided mounting squares. You can see on the packaging that 3M is the supplier of the adhesive. I've been using these for a long time now, and they are really reliable. And if you ever need to remove them, they won't cause massive amounts of damage to your wall surface, though you may get a bit of paint peel. Each piece comes with a total of four adhesive squares, but what I like to do is double that by cutting straight down the middle of each of the squares as shown, so that you have a total of eight rectangular shaped pieces. The key when applying the tape to the back of the diamond panels is to locate each area that is going to make direct contact with the wall. Because of the nature of 3D panels, there is a significant portion of the panel that is not going to come in contact with the wall at all, so there is no need to place double-sided tape here as it would simply be a waste of your supply. After you have placed the tape in all four corners of each panel and in all other key areas as shown, carefully place it onto your clean wall and press firmly for 10 to 15 seconds. And you're done. And from then on, you'll simply follow up each subsequent panel as close to the previous as possible. Now, unless you own a four leaf clover, you're more than likely gonna to come to a point where the panel needs to be cut to size to fit within your area. And this might involve cutting around things like your TV mount or maybe even a raceway strip. When the time comes for me to trim these panels, you're probably gonna be surprised to learn what exactly I primarily use, head shears. That's right, these large scissor-like tools are designed to be used for cutting tree branches, but they work remarkably well for slicing through these hard PVC panels. Now you can try using a generic pair of steel scissors as well, but you won't have nearly as much cutting power as with the shears, which means that it's gonna take you a lot longer and you'll probably end up with a much more uneven finish when it's all said and done. I'm sure that pretty much any head shear will do, but try to find a pair that has a power compounding link as this one, because this helps magnify the clamp force so you don't have to work as hard to get through this tough PVC material. Now obviously a buzz saw will get the job done faster and more precisely, but I don't have one on hand or a workshop table to get the job done correctly and safely. For this particular panel that I need to cut down to size, all I do is hold it up against the wall and then I use a pencil to mark the top and bottom areas where I need to cut. And make sure to use an actual pencil guys and not a Sharpie or an ink pen in case the cut isn't exactly perfect and your markings are still visible on the panel after you're done so that you can simply erase them. And for any fine tuning or touching up, go ahead and use an ordinary pair of steel scissors for better precision. A really big cutting tip here, if you find that you need to cut any of the panels on either of the endpoints for your project area, is to always cut the opposite side so that the finished end of the panel is not compromised. This will ensure that the entire edge of the wall that you're building has a smooth and polished look from top to bottom. If your project area is conjoining with an adjacent wall, similar to how my wall meets my cabinet right here, you could technically get away with installing the end that has been cut facing towards the edge. If you come to a situation where the cut end of a panel needs to line up directly next to a finished end, you will need to use the overlap method for a seamless look. Otherwise, there will be a very unsightly break in the panels from one angle or the other. The key to a successful overlap that doesn't overly protrude outward from the rest of the panels is to make sure that the unfinished panel is cut right where the majority of the diamonds slant inward. So for example, 
I would cut this panel that I'm planning to match up with the straight edge about right here. This is a good spot where most of the diamonds are dipping inward towards where the actual wall behind it will be. This is a little easier said than done, but if all else fails, just make sure that you don't cut directly down the middle of a very large diamond because that will create a very noticeable bump where the panels overlap. Another pro tip, if you need to install any panels that are higher than your line of sight, is to make sure that the cut end of the panel is placed so that it is pointing upward towards the ceiling because this 3D design is going to reveal the wall that is beneath it where the panel has been cut when viewed at a 90 degree angle. As you come closer towards the center of the wall, you won't need to be overly precise with your cuts, especially if you have a really big TV, because no one is going to see these imperfections unless they literally poke their head behind your TV, in which case, you might want to start questioning the company that you keep. Another detail with my particular setup that I wanted to point out to you guys is the Echo Gear Cable Raceway, which in my opinion is one of the best TV cable concealers on the market because of its 3.5 inch width which allows for a ton of large cables. And because of its snap on and off design, I was able to perfectly conceal the areas where the wall panel meets the raceway without the need to make any modifications to the panels at all. And that's really the extent of it, guys. Again, this is the method that worked for me for my particular setup. Every situation is going to be a little different. So this tutorial is mainly intended to serve as a high level guide. Whether you decide to go with double-sided tape and skip the caulking and the sanding process, this project is going to take some time and patience, and you're probably gonna mess up on a panel or two, but it's well worth the sweat on your brow because once the project is complete and you fire up your LEDs, life is never going to be the same, and you'll never be able to go back to an ordinary wall for your entertainment center again. Well, that about wraps things up for this one. If you found any part of this video to be helpful, make sure to give a quick thumbs up and to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, peace. Interject, interject.